Amen. Come on, somebody say that king is alive. Amen. Thank you, Brother Kelsey. That was amazing. The anointing is in this house. Amen. Man, Jesus is so good. I've got, uh, I know a lot of you are waiting to hear the cheesy message title that I'm going to throw up. I'm known to throw up some crazy titles, but today I just wanted to put this word on the screen for you. Easter. That's it. Somebody say Easter. But what does Easter mean to me? What does it mean to you? What does Easter mean to the world? If we look at it, to the world, Easter means some more money in their pockets. And I know we're guilty of it here of having our egg hunts. And let me just uh, disclose, nobody's going to hell for going to an egg hunt, all right? Let me just throw that out there. You can laugh, it's okay. But the world has tried to commercialize something that Jesus established for you and I. To the world, Easter is about commercial gain. When you walk into the store around Easter, the everything changes, everything's bright, everything's colorful. There's Easter bunnies hanging out of the ceiling. There's the Reese cups turned into a shape of an Easter egg and we still buy them and they're still good. Can I get a witness? Beautiful spring colors, rabbits everywhere, Easter eggs, baskets, beautiful flowers and candy, and beautiful springtime clothes. I'm telling you, some of y'all look really good today. Look at your neighbor and say, you're looking good. You're dressed up nice. Come on. Tell them you dress up nice. (laughs) But what does Easter mean to the believer? Well, to the believer, Easter doesn't have anything to do with rabbits or Easter eggs or picnics. To the Christian... Easter symbolizes, and this is what I'm going to preach about today. I believe that it's our spiritual birthday. I'm going to teach on that a little bit more here in just a moment. We all know that it's about Jesus, his resurrection, right? We know it's because the tomb is empty, and we just sang about it so beautifully. He's alive, and he is indeed alive. But what does that mean for us? It'd be one thing if we just came in here and said, oh, Jesus is alive. Praise God. But what do we do with our alive Jesus? What needs to change because that he is alive? Do we just say it once a year and wait until the next time the doors are open on Easter and say he's alive again? Or is there something that we can deposit in our hearts today and let it begin to change us? Let me explain, because most believers and you today, I know, would say, well, Pastor Zach, I thought it was only about the resurrection. It is about the resurrection. But he wants you to see something about yourself today. There's something that happened during that resurrection that still ripples through the airways of time and is still relevant to us today. I'm going to teach you about that here in just a moment. But before I preach on, I want to just give you one word. I want you to think about this word all day. That word is substitution. Somebody say substitution. Substitution. What does Easter mean to you? What does it mean to me? I've asked one of our anointed youth students to come, and uh, she is going to, Miss Savannah Collins, she's going to tell you in spoken word this morning what Easter means to her. Won't you give it up for Savannah Collins as she comes to the stage? On Easter Day, we like to think of when the stone was rolled away and when he rose from the grave. I want to think of how he felt. Did the nails that pierced his skin remind him of the ones he would hammer when he was younger? Did the smell of wood he used to carve remind him of his humanity? Was it such a surprise he died on a cross from a tree, the same way, the same thing in Eden that led to his sacrifice? I try to put myself in his shoes, but I cannot. Dying for future generations, for sins you never commit. When he hung his head and died was his last thoughts, you and me. His body laid in a tomb, but on the third day he rose from the grave, conquering death. His love and grace wrapping us in his arms, his death of forgiving of our sins, him coming back for our new life. 
a sacrifice of love to set you and me free. So I'm only like to remember him on this day, but I wish to remind, even if it's just myself, that every day we have a wonderful day. Come on, let's give it up one more time, Savannah. Amen. When we look into the scriptures, we see that Paul was the one who really unveiled this revelation of substitution in the New Testament. What does Easter mean to you? To me, Brother Kenny, it's that word, substitution. What does it mean? It means the act, the process, of the or the result of sub- substituting one thing for another. One that is substituted for another. Example, how many remembers in school? Some of y'all, y'all got to think a little while when school was. Some of y'all, you know it's coming again next week, right? You remember in school when the substitute teacher showed up. A substitute teacher. Now, a lot of us tortured that substitute teacher. You know who you are. Don't don't lie in the house of the Lord. You know who you are. But this substitute that I'm talking about, no man can come against. A teacher who stands in and acts in the place of another, that's a substitute teacher. So a substitute is one that takes the place of another. This spiritual principle is foreshadowed in the Old Testament. It is in the story of the sacrifice goat and the scapegoat. Now, follow me here. The first goat was killed as a sin offering in Leviticus 4 and 24. You can write that down if you want. Leviticus 4 and 24. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the goat and kill it in the place where they kill the burnt offering before the Lord. It is a sin offering. So we have two goats in this story. We have two goats. And these two goats together complete this picture of substitution. First, follow me here, is the sacrifice goat dying for the sins of the people. So you have the picture of one dying in the place of another. And the second, the priest would lay their hands on the head of another goat and then send him off, send him away into the wilderness. And this was symbolic of the goat becoming the guilty one. And the ones who were guilty of the sins were released from the penalties of their sins. And this was the picture, that the goat took the place of the guilty people with their sins and because that goat in the book of Leviticus carried away their sins the Bible says that the children of Israel were free from their sins so here you have the full picture of substitution in the word of God one dying in the place of another for their sins and the one taking the sins of another and giving them freedom Can I tell you today that that's exactly what Jesus did? That's exactly. The innocent one took our sins himself, and the innocent one died in our place as the guilty one. And he took away our sins and gave us innocence, his righteousness. The Bible says it like this in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Somebody say, for me who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So the Bible says there is none righteous, not only one. For all have sinned and come short of God's glory. We all, like sheep, have gone astray and turned everyone to His way. And the wages of sin is death. Somebody say death. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. But here's the wonder of it all, church. There was one human being born out of all the millions and probably billions of people of every nationality and every race who was perfect and who was sinless. Can I tell you that there was only one and his name is Jesus. We need to celebrate this morning that the perfect one, the lamb that was slain, he, he, he died on the cross and he rose from the grave for you and I. Jesus offered himself in our place as that sacrificial lamb to redeem us from our sins and restore us back to fellowship with God. Now, remember I said that Easter to me is a celebration of my spiritual birthday. Here's why. Because substitution has two parts. First, Jesus the innocent one dying as the guilty one. And second, it is our identification with him. 
our identification with him. So because he was willing to take my place as a substitute, now through identification, everything that he paid for with his sacrifice becomes identified with you and I. Somebody say, he's my father. Have you ever been in a a sticky situation and you're standing with your dad and you're like, I'm with him. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I hope one day that that's what happens when we're out somewhere and Leland walks up beside me and he says, that's my daddy. You better not mess with me. That's my daddy. I mean, I better start going to the gym. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you better start going too. Come on, tell them. But everything that Jesus did, all of a sudden it is identified, the price that he paid was identified with you. He gave us the right to become children of the living God, sons and daughters of the king. What does that mean, Pastor Zach? Listen, this is exactly what it means. Let me make it a little more simplified for you today. Now through identification, I am resurrected with him. Is anybody resurrected with the master this morning? That's the identification that I'm talking about. Now through my identification with him, the The old man or the old woman of sin was crucified with Jesus, and now you are a new creation in Jesus Christ. That is the ministry of identification. Then through identification with him, when Jesus was resurrected from the dead, I was resurrected with him. I no longer have to be that same person that I used to be. You no longer have to be the same that you used to be because of the song, uh, the message of that song that Dwayne sang he is alive and because he lives because he lives you can live also I don't know about you, but that just fires me up this morning. That that just gets me going. And by faith, when Jesus arose, so did I. Romans 6 and 4, if you read, says it this way. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that uh, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we shall also walk in the newness of life. That means that when he was crucified, you were crucified with him. You were buried with him. But let me give you the good news. You were raised to new life with him. That's the message of the gospel. Man and woman is a sinner first by birth and then by choice. Man and woman is guilty before God. God sent his son as a substitute sacrificial lamb. And Jesus paid our sin debt in our place and gave us his righteousness. Would somebody help me and praise God for his righteousness this morning? Give him a hand clap of praise. But not only to eternal life, but also to abundant life. Somebody needs to know this morning that you have access through what Jesus did on the cross. And when he rose from the grave, it gave you access into the bank of heaven. Well, what's in the bank of heaven, Pastor Zach? How about this? Number one, you go up to the teller and say, I need to make a withdrawal from the bank of heaven. Well, what do you need, sir? What do you need, ma'am? Well, the Lord said that when he got up from the grave, I could have something called joy is anybody excited that you can have joy and then he said I could have something called peace does anybody need some peace in the house and then he said because I got up you can have authority because he got up I can have health today because he got up I can prosper today does anybody like that word come on or because he got up I can have anointing today and because he got out of that grave I have power to trample all over the enemy that is coming against me. And all of this is contained in the salvation verse of the Bible, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is for you, that is for me, that is to the one that will receive this love and not reject this love. You may reject this love and turn your back on him and walk away, but he will never stop loving you. Somebody say, I know it's true. And let me tell you something, I'm not afraid to say it today. If you reject him, 
him when the trumpet sounds and he tears open the eastern sky and comes riding back on a white horse and you miss him. There is a place for every sinner and that place is called hell and that place is has real people in it and they rejected God. But for the one that says, I believe that he is crucified and risen and coming again, then we get heaven. Then we're not going to that place, but we have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Is anybody excited about it? Raccoon Valley. You may criticize him. You may mock him and ridicule his name and spit in his face. You may be like the people there when Jesus came riding in and they, 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 they captured him and uh, they, they arrested him and they brought him before Pilate and they said, here's your king. And they said, the only king that we need is Caesar. Is that not what the world is crying today when they reject Jesus? They're saying the world... Hint, hint, Caesar, hint, hint, Satan, the God of this world. That's our master. Can I tell you that as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't need Caesar. I need King Jesus. I'm telling you, he's alive today. You may criticize him and mock him and ridicule his name, spit in his face as a crowd did on crucifixion day, but he will say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Some of us ignorantly have spit in his face and turned away, but you know today, if you have haven't known by now by the time the preacher got up in here everybody in this place was singing about how he was alive and how the tomb was empty and, and you even got a spoken word from a, a someone in gen z for crying out loud everybody knows that jesus is alive what are you going to do with it today are you going to leave here still with an empty heart? Or are you going to leave here full of the, the spirit of the living God? For the Bible says that in Adam all died. That means that because of the first Adam's sin, the entire human race was born into sin. But Jesus came along and paid the price for our sin with his own blood and bought, brought us back into fellowship with God. And I'm so glad that Jesus died for me, but I'm even more gladder. That's not a word, but I'm going to preach it how I feel it. I'm gladder 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 that he got up from that grave I was lost but now I'm found I was blind but now I see I was dead but now I live and I not only have eternal life but I have abundant life can I tell you that when you have Jesus you don't worship for victory you worship from a place of victory can I tell you that when you have Jesus uh, everything else doesn't mean anything when he, you take him by the hand He'll lead you every single day. I not only have heaven to go to, I have heaven to go to, and I've got heaven that I'm standing in right now. His presence is heaven to me. We sing it sometimes. His presence is heaven to me. The old hymn says it this way, Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. I got a question. Do you have glory in your soul today? Do you have glory in your heart today? Do you have that joy of knowing that your sins are forgiven today? Do you know that right now the old things have passed away and the new things have come? All you've got to do is reach out and grab it for yourself. The Bible says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And as we gather today, we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. You can be raised from the from death of sin into a new life with Christ today in a moment's time a lot of you know that it's true, Brother Stephen. You can go from darkness to light. Jack, you know that you, you can go from lost to found. Uh, uh, you, you, you know, Angie, I call her sissy. Uh, you know, sissy, that, that you can go from sinking, sinking deep and deep and deep to standing upon the rock that will never sink and you will never drown. When life tells you that you're going to go under, all you got to do is stand on the rock. And everybody knows that you can go from death to life because Jesus. Jesus paid it all. You see, the bondage of guilt and shame to the freedom of knowing that your sins are forgiven and your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. What does Easter mean to me? You heard me ask the question. What does Easter mean to you? 
I'm not going to leave here after Sunday, go to Kroger and try to find 50% off Reese Cup Easter eggs, Gabe, even though that would be very nice. But when I leave here, I'm going to leave knowing that my precious Jesus is alive. I want our praise team to come, if you will, praise team. I'm going to leave here knowing that I am alive today because Jesus is alive. And there's no need for me to preach for three hours because the message is still the same as it always has been. Jesus died on a tree. They put him in a borrowed tomb. The angel rolled away the stone and he came walking out in all of his glory. And he walked around Tony. Tony, he walked around showing everybody. Look at the scars in my hand. Look at the nail scars in my feet. Then he said, don't touch me for I have yet to ascend to my father. He walked around just rubbing it in the devil's face is how I like to look at it. Look what I did. I got up out of this grave. My father raised me up for you. Now let me talk about my enemy Just for a moment His name is Satan No, it's not the neighbor that throws things across your fence into your yard It is Satan, the prince of darkness With all his demons and every ounce of hellish power At his disposal He could not hold Jesus in the grave. The moment God the Father said he, the demands of justice have been satisfied, the mighty Holy Spirit began to pulse through the body of Jesus Christ. And he started to get his life back. And I could see him just sitting there in the Spirit start flexing his fist and moving his arms and looking Satan in the eyes saying, look at me move. You thought you had me down. You thought you had me dead, but I'm alive and well. I'm alive. You see that soul? You see that soul? You see that soul? You can't have that one. 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 I'm going to get up out of this grave. You can't have any of them. I'm alive and you can't have them. You can't have that one and that one and that one. And then I think he looked at him, Brother Donnie, and said, I want that one back and 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 that one back. And the enemy said, show me the proof. He said, look at the scars in my hands. Can I just tell you that he came riding into town all humble and humble on a donkey, on a borrowed colt. But the next time that he comes back, he's going to be on a white horse. His robe's going to be dipped in blood. He's going to have fire in his eyes. And the Bible says in Ephesians 4 and 8, he ascended up on high. He led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And I've got to say this, Jesus is awesome. I mean, the, uh, uh, the God that we serve is absolutely, undeniably amazing. And that same resurrection power is at work in you and I today. Romans 8 and 11 says, But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwells in you. That means because He lives, I live also. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds my future and life is worth living because he lives. Would you stand on your feet Raccoon Valley Church of God this morning and just lift your hands and say I'm going to live today because he lives. Oh hallelujah. Jesus we need you today. Holy Spirit we need you in this house today. Church Come on, don't quit. Lift your hands all around. I know you got plans. I know you got plans. I know you got food in the oven. But can you lift those hands? Because let me tell you, let me give you a little bit of insight into the Spirit. I guarantee you every legion, every power of darkness and every demon in hell is praying against the church of Jesus Christ today. 
The enemy, Satan, he is real, but he is a defeated foe. There is an enemy that wants you to leave here bitter, mad, upset. There's an enemy that's going to tell you, I'm going to pick apart that sermon. I'm going to pick apart that praise team. The chairs were crooked. It smelled kind of weird. Oh, there was not enough parking. I was parked in the grass. I broke a nail. I broke whatever. That's what the enemy is going to try to do today, to take your focus off the one thing that truly matters, that the grave is empty, the tomb is empty, and Jesus is alive. But here's what I want to do today. I want to pray specifically that Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, would tear that veil off of your eyes that the enemy has tried to put there and that you would fall in love with Jesus all over again. Father, help us today to see how good you are. Father, every person under the sound of my voice, let them see how wonderful you are. That you are alive. That you are indeed the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There's not a program. There's not a piece of technology. There's not a drink. There's not a drug. There's nothing that can replace how you make us feel. You make me whole. You make us free. Oh, we've been redeemed by your blood. And through identification and substitution, there ain't no grave that can hold my body down because there was no grave that could hold your body down. 